In this video, we're going to look at section 2.5 using special axioms in equational proofs. And the learning outcomes for this section are a continuation of the learning outcomes from the previous sections of chapter 2, which are simply to continue to write equational style proofs for equivalences of formulae. Um, so we'll, we'll just continue to develop new absolute theorems and relative theorems that we can add to our toolbox to help us to discover more mathematical truths. So recall the redundant truth theorem that we proved in class the last time. So we, we were able to prove that either top is equivalent to A is equivalent to A, or applying symmetry, A equivalent to A is equivalent to top. And we can see that this is a generalization of one of our axioms, namely that when A is bottom we get our axiom top equivalent to bottom equivalent to bottom, and then a symmetric version of that. So the interesting thing about this redundant true theorem, so this absolute theorem within logic, is that we can take this theorem from logic, study it from the outside, so come to the meta theory, and be able to use this to identify some properties about logic. So for example, we get the redundant true meta theorem, which says the, the following. So for any collection of hypotheses gamma, any collection of well-formed formula gamma, and any well-formed formula A, we know that gamma proves A if and only if gamma proves that A is equivalent to top. And we'll see later how this can be applied. So by applying this redundant truth theorem, we know that if we take this into the meta theory, we can apply our notion of semantics, right? So, so we discovered in class that we want to know the relationship, for example, between the equivalence operation and the biconditional operator, if and only if, which is not formally a member of our logic, but we understand the meaning of this outside of logic. And, and we also recognize that, that, that they have the same truth values. And we also were able to prove this essentially within logic using the ping-pong theorem. So, right, the ping-pong theorem says exactly that, that the equivalents will have the same meaning as the biconditional operator, which is the same as an implication one way and implication the other. So, the meta theorem simply applies this redundant truth theorem and gives it a bit more semantics, a bit more intuition about what we know about, about this theorem and gives us this theorem um, and this theorem allows us to derive, actually, a relative theorem within logic. So this special case says that A proves that A is equivalent to top. And this follows directly from this redundant true meta theorem because we know and we proved a few classes ago that A proves A, right? So if A is a hypothesis, the proof of this is simply to write A as a hypothesis and that's that proof. And so then this tells us that A proves A is equivalent to top because if gamma is A, then having this, which we know is true, implies this, where we replace gamma by A, and we get this statement here. So this is going to be a very important property that we're going to apply um, to help us prove some other theorems later on. So and this is something that we'll continue to use. Another perhaps surprising result is the following meta theorem, which is an, a direct application of this meta theorem, which says that for any collection of well-formed formula gamma, which we can think of as hypotheses, and well-formed formula A and B, if we know that gamma proves A and gamma proves B, then it turns out that gamma proves that A is equivalent to B. So this seems like a very surprising result, but essentially what we want to continue to remember is that we're in the meta theory here so we're looking at logic from the outside and this is where we're simply applying semantics so we're simply applying truth values to these statements and so because gamma proves a and gamma proves b we simply know that they're true um, or relatively true with respect to gamma but then that means that they both have the same truth value so essentially equivalence just tells us in the meta theory that they have the same truth value. So that's that's what equivalence means to us. It doesn't mean that they're the same well-formed formula as we had talked about in class. Okay, so the equivalence simply means that they have the same truth values. These are formally different 
well-formed formula. They could be the same well-formed formula, but essentially this general result is that A and B are not the same, but they're both relative theorems within logic, and the result is that they're equivalent. They have the same truth value. They're both true because they're both relative theorems. So both true with relative to gamma. Okay, so now let's see an application in particular of this special case that A proves that A is equivalent to tau. So reminding ourselves about this result, essentially what this tells us is that wherever we have an hypothesis in our proofs, we can always replace our hypothesis with top. Right? So by Labneys, particularly when we're applying a Hilbert style proof, we, we need to use Labneys establish this equivalence before we can conclude the other one. So we'll also be applying EQN as well. So, so by being able to apply Labneys and EQN, or through simple equational style proofs, right, wherever we see a hypothesis, we could replace it with top. And this is going to be helpful because we know top has some nice properties, such as eventually we can get rid of top altogether because the meaning is completely there. So sometimes if you have a more complicated well-formed formula, we want to simplify it a little bit. We, we want to be able to replace anything we can with top. So anything essentially that we know is true, we want to be able to replace it by top so that we can simplify as much as possible to get to the theorem or the result that we want to. Alternatively, because of the redundant truth theorem, right, we can also replace any occurrences of top with A. Right? So perhaps we need to put some information back in. So this is really helpful, right? Just looking at the symmetry of this of the equivalence operator, A proves top is equivalent to A. So we can we can replace any occurrence of top by A as well. So you'll see where this comes in handy later. Okay, so in the next set of, uh, well, the next video, in the last video for this section, we're going to look at some important results and another important meta theorem that we'll use in the next section.